the Spartans 20, welcome to Phoenix Press. Sorry it's been so long, but I was actually trying to organize the channel, so don't blame me, and the people who make me do this. I have people on the channel, I have one person who actually do it, but he doesn't do it, not even just as a stick pitch. <coughs> anyway, chapter 18 of Rejected. Wow, Pip. I already failed, wow. Nora propped herself down on to the couch in her eyelid sitting position, her hooves gripping a plate, holding a slice of Bon Bon's favorite strawberry pie. Sorry, I sound kind of... Um... Tired, I guess? This is kind of late, you know? So... She would have levitated the plate... She would have levitated the plate but her magic was currently occupied playing a tune on a lyre, which Lyra affectionately referred to as her lazy song. <laughs> the clock showed that it the clock showed that in a couple of hours, Bon Bon and Tootsie would be back from work and school respectively so far this afternoon so far this afternoon was shaping up to be just a kind of lyra and go <coughs> damn it so far this afternoon was shaping up to be just the kind that lyra and joke She heard, she heard the door open, and assumed that Bon Bon had come home from work early. Putting down the plate, she went to a greet her smiling wife, only to find her daughter, Tootsie Fruit. Face stared with, bleh, face face stained with tears. Lyra was surprised, and devoured and devastated to see her daughter so sad. She inst she instantly wanted to make Tootsie feel better, but bleh, though she was unsure how she would do that. Fucking Lyra. Music, retard. Jeez. Bon Bon had always been better in these situations. Lyra tried to say something reassuring, but she was cut off when Tootsie ran past her into her room. She winced at the sound of the door slamming, feeling that feeling that, that she that that could have gone better. across the room, she saw the piece of strawberry pie, a reminder of what she thought was going to be a happy afternoon. That, that wasn't important now. Tootsie was sad, and right now, Lyra's, Lyra's prime, prime div, div, directive was to make her feel better. Tootsie Fruit was on her bed when her mother came in to her room, to the room, <laughs> retard. Lyra didn't say anything. Too, too, she, too fearful that she might say something stupid. Instead, she sat at the foot of her child's bed and placed the piece of strawberry pie on the bedside table. Tootsie looked up at her mama. She was unable to She was unable to articulate just how hurt she was, so she didn't say anything. 
looked up at her mother, and her mother looked down at her, down on her, with what she hoped was a reassuring smile. When the slice, when the silence became too much to bear, Lila finally spoke. Tootsie, why are you crying? Tootsie wiped her eyes. She wiped her tears away and tried, tried as best as she could to explain her heartbreak. I thought, I thought I liked this girl, but she, but she didn't like me. I get you crying right now, sunshine. The worst part came out as a hiccup. As, as a new wave of tears came through. Lila pulled the veil close, finally understanding. Of course, sadness like this could only be due to love. Lila herself had left such such stings before in her past and knew only too well how painful un un love could be. Hey, Tootsie, your mom and me went through that exact same experience when she was your age. Lyle said. Tootsie looked up at her mother. Really? Lyla, Lyla nodded. What did you do about it? Well, well, <laughs> well, I cried at first, but then I, be I began thinking. I told myself, if this is how it's meant to be, then I guess she isn't my true love after all. I even stayed friends with her to this day, and I did fi fi finally find my true love. Lila smiled and stroked Tootsie's head. Your mom. So, everything turned out alright? Uh, yep. And it, it will turn out alright now too, I promise. Tootsie Scoop. Tootsie Scoop felt better knowing that she would feel better in the, in the future. But she still felt down now and didn't know what to do about it. Lyle saw her daughter's sadness and felt that desperate. Mm. Lyle saw her daughter's sadness and felt that desperate. All she had had done, she still failed. That guy's like really hard to think. Was there anything left sh she could do to cheer up her daughter? A thought struck her, and she smiled. She's, she still had one last trick left her sleeve, except for her sleeves. Lyle's horn glowed, and her lyre from the living room. Lyle's horn glowed, and her lyre from the living room into Tootsie, into Tootsie. Into Tootsie. Lyle began plucking at notes with her magic, letting the song she knew to be heart flow flow out. Tootsie was convinced at. Tootsie was convinced at first. Tootsie was confused at first, but began to catch on at as she recognized the melody. Lila was playing Tootsie's favorite song for her. 
just as she had promised. I seemed to be soft. Tizzy began to feel her sadness subside. She, she dried her eyes and slowly shifted closer to her mother, pulling her into a tight embrace. She smiled and returned the hug, not once breaking her concentration on the song. She never told anyone, but this was her favorite song as well, because it was the song that made her daughter smile. Aww. The two held each other as the notes drifted through the house. Their love for each other was enough to overtake Tootsie. Tootsie unacquainted love for Twix. Tootsie's unacquainted love for Twix. <coughs> the song ended and Tootsie started to stare up at her mother. They, sh they shared a smile that held all the love that a mother and daughter could muster for each other. Lila kissed her daughter on the forehead, right before, right below the horn, and whispered, Tootsie, if you're ever feeling sad again, just tell me, and I'll, and I'll be sure to play this song for you. Tootsie rose up from her bed and smiled the brightest smile she could. Thank you, Mama, Tootsie said. Lila felt so overjoyed to hear those words. She, <coughs> she had been so afraid she wouldn't be able to lighten her daughter's mood. But now she had done it, and it felt so great. In the doorway, Bon Bon stood, watching, so, so proud of her wife and daughter. Slowly, she walked back down the hall to the kitchen to get a meal ready for the two ponies she loved the most. On, on the morning of the next school day, all the little fillies and colts were sitting down and getting ready for class. Twist. <laughs> Sorry. Twist glanced at at Truffle Shuffle, who sat next to him. He smiled at her, and she quickly, she quite quickly blushed and turned away. When she turned, she noticed that Tootsie's Bit had just come to class and was sitting sitting at her desk. Now here we go again. Hey Tootsie Boo. Hey, hey, hey Tootsie. I, I, <laughs> I didn't see you during Hard for Her today. Where'd you go? Twist asked. Tootsie smiled at her friend and responded. Yeah, I was feeling well. I, I wasn't feeling well, but my mama helped me feel better. Truth be told. Tootsie had decided not to tell Twist about what had happened on Hugs and Hugs Day. After all, Twist was happy with her new colt friend, and Tootsie Fleet was happy to remain her friend's remain her friend. Perhaps she would find new love with some pony race, but for now she was happy to have the friends and family who loved her already. <laughs> already. Okay, <sighs> now it's time for the comments, which there are none of.
Well, that's really nice, doesn't it? <sighs> well... <laughs> Couple little updates. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff planned for you guys. So, I hope you stay tuned to Pony Express because we've got awesome stuff coming up. We've got so much stuff going on in the background right now. Mm. I can't wait to get it done. I can't wait. Um, anyway, um, I'm Spartan20. This is Pony Express. Have a nice day.